What's up guys, I'm Bob Tompkins with the Living in SC team at Real Broker and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode of Living in SC, we're gonna be talking about one of Greenville's most underdeveloped areas and a great opportunity if you're potentially looking to move here to have a good strong investment on the west side of Greenville. But before we get into that, if you're thinking about making a move to South Carolina, our team at the Living in SC team would love to help you with that. You can reach out to us at info at livinginsc.com or shoot us a text at the number listed below and we'd love to connect with you and see if we can be a great resource for you in your move to South Carolina. But without any further ado, let's get into it. Now, if you're looking at Greenville, South Carolina as a potential relocation, you may notice that the west side of Greenville is largely undeveloped. There hasn't been a lot of stuff done between Greenville and Anderson. While Powdersville is a growing community and you do have some great areas around Pendleton and Clemson, the large part of that west side of Greenville is kind of untapped land while some builders and whatnot are moving out in that direction. So you may be wondering why most of that development hasn't happened on the west side and the majority of the development has happened on the north and southeast side. And I'm gonna give you my couple of opinions why. First and foremost, over Greenville's history, a lot of business development as well as the international airport have been built on that northeast side just outside of Greer where you have Greenville International Airport, you have the BMW plant, you have companies like Michelin that have a lot of their corporate offices over there. So there's a ton of development that's been made that direction because of the corporations and the transportation that is offered there. Also, you have the Southeast side where Simpsonville exists as well as Fountain Inn, and there's been a lot of development there as well. And in my opinion, the fact that that is good flat land outside of Greenville has made it easy for development as well as its access down to Columbia, which is the state capital. But it kind of leaves that west side of Greenville rather untapped. People haven't been moving there in the same droves that they have to the other areas. So if you're looking for a place that could offer you some peace of mind, as well as moving to a place that could be a good investment because there could be a lot of future development in the coming years. So when you look at the west side of Greenville, there are three places in particular that I want to highlight. The first of those is Easley, South Carolina. Easley is a straight shot off of 123 into downtown Greenville. And from downtown Easley to downtown Greenville, you can make that trip in about 20 to 25 minutes, which is comparable to some of the other downtown suburbs like Greer and Simpsonville, where it takes about 20 to 25 minutes to get into Greenville proper. Now, Easley is a fast growing place. It is probably the most developed of the places I'm gonna talk about on the west side of Greenville, but there's still a ton of potential for Easley to continue to grow. The other great thing about Easley is if you enjoy the outdoors and you wanna have good access to different things like state parks um, or down over to like Paris Mountain, those are things that you have really good access to from the Easley side. One of the things that people in Easley can complain about though is 123 is the highway. If you're wanting to get into Greenville or if you're trying to commute over to Clemson, 123 is the highway that you have to use and some people can complain about how congested that highway can get and I will say for how little development is on the west side of Greenville 123's traffic is pretty bad for uh, the lower number of people that live on this side of Greenville. Coming in second on my list of places to look at on the west side of Greenville is Powdersville. Now, Powdersville is way less developed. However, there are a lot of builders that are now making their way into Powdersville as they have the ability to build out off of 153. Now, 153 is the road that connects Powdersville up to Easley, but one of the benefits of Powdersville is that you can jump up to 123 to come into Greenville, but you can also use Highway 81 or you can jump right onto I-85 and come in that direction. So Powdersville is centrally located to those different highways, which does make it nice for your commutes or just getting around the upstate with the various things that you may need to do in your day-to-day -day life. That being said, being in Powdersville, 153 is not nearly as congested as 123 is, albeit it does have some good traffic, but Powdersville is one of those areas that you could potentially get into now 
before the boom of development does start to happen, which could lead you to a pretty quick return on investment if you're lucky. Now, the third place I would implore people to look if you're looking on that west side of Greenville is the entire north side of I-85 in Anderson County. Now, that is a huge stretch of land, but if you look at a map, you'll see nothing but green undeveloped land on like your Google Maps. And that's because very little development has happened in this area. And honestly, to me, it's rather surprising. When you combine elements like Greenville's boom, Anderson's growth, as well as the University of Clemson, it's pretty surprising that a lot of that in-between land has not really been built on. For me personally, this is the area that I live in because I see a lot of future plans and future development happening in this area. And my hope is, is that that will turn into a good return in the future. However, right now, it also provides really good ease of travel. Because there hasn't been a lot of development in that area, the interstate up to downtown Greenville, as well as Highway 81 down into Anderson, are normally pretty open roads that are easy to travel. So commute times, getting to the grocery store, running around with our kids is always really easy from where we live. But in addition to that, Anderson School District 1 and Anderson School District 4, which are on that north side of 85, kind of running from the lake all the way up to Powdersville, are some of the most highly regarded school districts by different parents in the state. Those schools rank higher than a lot of different schools on websites like niche.com and great schools. Now, while I can't endorse those schools because I don't have any personal experience with them, a lot of other parents have had really good things to say, and the ratings on these different websites do reflect that. So there is an opportunity to get in to school systems that the public highly regards, as well as getting into an area that has a lot of potential from an investment and development standpoint, which is one of the reasons that I personally really love this area. But in the meantime, all of these areas on the west side of Greenville allow you to have a little bit more distance from people currently and a little more breathing room, even if you wanna be able to take advantage of how great Greenville's downtown is and some of the different things that are happening in the upstate of South Carolina. Now guys, I hope this video has been helpful to you if you're looking around the different areas of the upstate. And once again, we would love to help you at the Living in SC team if you're thinking about moving to the area. Remember, give us a email at info at livinginsc.com or shoot us a text at the number listed below. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, check out some of our other videos, and we'll see you next time on Living in South Carolina.